everything else. But who is starting at the two? You have Kevin Herter, you have Malik Monk, and you have Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis, Chris, he drops 30 points yesterday. He balls out in the Battle of NorCal, and I'm seeing the Kings different muse accounts right the keon ellis yeah. muse the the sacramento kings muse all these accounts saying you're starting your your starting shooting guard moving forward keon ellis will right. be in the starting lineup and we talked about how okay it's summer league how much should we equate what Keon Ellis is doing and bowling out to summer in summer league to the fact that he should be starting. We haven't even had this conversation, me and you, yeah. because we're doing it live yep. right here on the radio at 916-339-1140. If you want to be a part of the conversation, should Keon Ellis start at the two? Mm. And if not, who should it be? Just straight up, very yeah. simple. Chris, as it stands right now yep. with the current roster, yeah. season starts tomorrow. Let's play the game. Who is starting at the two for you? I still have Keon. I still think it's Keon. I think that every reason that to, to and you know, uh, there is a portion of it that has to do with actually Keon and his abilities and, and where he's at in his development. And a part of it, you know, I would say a bigger part of it is still that it still makes every reason that we listed last season for why yeah. Malik Monk should continue to come off the bench and shouldn't be inserted into the starting lineup, even though Kevin Herter was struggling at the time. It all still applies. The flow makes more sense. It makes sense, especially... I would argue it makes even more sense now with DeMar DeRozan in that lineup. If you're afraid of your your ball stopping and, you know, the defense being a problem, which has been the main talking point since DeMar has gotten here, then you have to start Keon Ellis. Because yeah. if you're going to throw out a lineup with De'Aaron, Monk, DeRozan, Keegan, Sabonis, that's where you could potentially run into some potential I wouldn't call it spacing problems, yeah. but that's where, hey, Malik likes to run the pick and roll with Sabonis. DeRozan more than likely is going to want to run the same thing with Sabonis. You can't really, it's not that you can't, but it just doesn't make the most optimal sense. I think Keon being a spot up shooter, which he shot 41% last yeah. year, he's knocked down threes in this summer league so far. There's no reason to not think that's a part of his game. I think it makes more sense to have Keon out there. Keon can then defend the best perimeter offensive player. So De'Aaron doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, uh, DeRozan doesn't have to worry about that either. We saw it last year when they go against teams like Memphis. You don't want De'Aaron Fox spending 48 minutes guarding John Morant and trying to put up 30 right. points. We need somebody to take that weight off of his shoulders, and you definitely don't want DeMar in that situation either. So I just think for all the reasons why we listed last year, mainly the flow of the game and how these guys like to get their touches, I still think it makes the most sense. Run Keon out there for six to seven minutes, sub him out with De'Aaron, put Malik in. I think you can run a Malik DeRozan Sabonis lineup, or you can take DeRozan and stagger those minutes with Fox as well right. and just run Monk and Sabonis and then Fox and DeRozan together. I think that's the most fun part about it, but uh, definitely I'm still feeling like Keon Ellis is in the front is in the front line right now to get that starting spot, even with Kevin Herter on the, on the lineup. Because that's what I was going to basically ask. There's, Three options here, and yeah. actually, there's more than three sure. options, and we'll read them on Get the text crazy. line as well. That today's the today's the day yeah. for it. <laughs> but I would say Kevin Herter, as and I feel crazy saying this based on what I've said about Kevin Herter in the yeah. past, but I think Kevin Herter, honestly, you would have the conversation about Kevin Herter even before Malik Monk with the addition of DeMar DeRozan. Sure. So now the question would be Keon Ellis or Kevin Herter. Kevin Herter offensively, oh, he's a shooter, he's a shooter. That's the thing. Keon Ellis can defend in yeah. a way that Kevin Herter cannot defend. Yeah. And then on top of that, his shooting, is it crazy to say, isn't terribly far behind Kevin From Herter a percentage at this point? Standpoint, no. From a percentage Especially standpoint, last it's season's crazy. Kevin Herter. Yeah. Yeah. If it's yeah. if it's two seasons ago, Kevin right. Herter, let's have sure. a conversation. Yeah. But but with what we saw from Kevin Herter last season, obviously he's getting that shoulder taken care right. of. No, that's a factor too. But it's a question mark now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a exactly. question mark as to whether he'll be better because of the sur surgery or if he has to come back. So I was torn on it. I've I've wanted Malik Monk to start because I do like to I, I do like to reward players yeah, for, for sure. balling out. For and Malik sure. Monk, he already took the pay cut. Yep. He's deciding to stay in Sacramento. He loves yep. Sacramento, loves the golf, loves the weather. And now all of a sudden, he's still going to have to come off the bench. But the only reason I'm okay with it and I'm changing my tune yeah. is because 
Monty McNair made the move. You got DeMar DeRozan. We'll get into DeMar DeRozan a little bit later in the show and how that offense will, I guess, evolve. But if it was the same exact roster, I would say, Chris, I don't care about the, oh, well, we need him off the bench. I I think you need to reward this guy for what he's done. He needs to start, and you figure it out later. You get DeMar DeRozan, you have to have a different conversation. And I think Malik Monk would also feel like that because he has said, I want to start – but, you know, I want to do what's best for the team. Right. Malik Monk was probably of the mindset of, if I take this pay cut mm-hmm. and you run out the same lineup and I have to come off the bench still, then we have a problem. Right. I think the conversation was with Monty McNair and ownership, everybody yep. with Malik Monk, hey, we're going to make a move and we're, our plan is to make a move. Yep. If we don't make a move, you'll start. If we make that move, are you still open to coming off the bench? And they went out and they made the move. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's a great point about, yeah, if DeMar wasn't here, I think there is more of a conversation mm-hmm. because you don't have that necessarily that pop that you want. And like you said, you want to reward these guys and you want to reward, thank Malik in yeah. a way for saying, thank you for sticking with us. Right. Here's here's a small token of our appreciation because it's really what we're talking about here really isn't that big of a deal. Yeah. I mean, the starting spot, it means something for pride. It, I'm sure it means a little something in your contract potentially as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, Malik Monk, I think maybe there's a more interesting conversation about who ends these games, right? Because, yeah, we can start we can talk about, oh, yeah, go ahead and start whoever. And then you can implement, you know, Kevin Herter and Malik and stagger them however you want. But you can't have that conversation last five minutes of the game. And so last five, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll just throw it to you. Last five minutes of a game, you have De'Aaron out there. You have DeRozan out there. You have Sabonis out there. I would think as it's currently constructed, Keegan's pretty cemented in mm-hmm. there as well. Where I, are you just going off flow? Are you? Go, I think like, it depends you're going on the, the, the game. Day or yeah, yeah I mean, if, is if, it the personnel you're going against? I mean, those these are the decisions Mike Brown's going to have to make in real time. Yeah, if if Malik's been hot that game, I, I think you have to keep yeah, Malik right. in. You know, Kevin Herter, if he's hot. You keep Kevin Herter in, and if neither of them are hot, you go with Keon for defense. Mm. That that's essentially what I would say. So that would be your your hierarchy would be Malik one, Herter two, uh, uh, Ellis three. Basically, for, it's it's yeah. hotness. Okay, mm-hmm. this is essentially what did Abercrombie and Fitch get in trouble for that? And there was you know they were only hiring hot people. <laughs> yes. I would say it's based on who's yeah. hot between. Malik Monk and Kevin Herter, and then you always have yeah. Keon. Yeah. Or if you're trying to protect a lead, right? Yeah, then that could be if you're too, chasing, right? it's Malik or or Kevin Herter. If you're protecting a lead, yeah, you go Keon Ellis. One thing I've seen from Keon, and we tried to do this breakdown, his shooting, and this was his first year, but that second half shooting was not the same as the first half shooting. Sure. So you have to be okay with that if you're not chasing. If you're protecting a lead, yeah. then I then I go with Keon. You have some other. Other ideas here, Chris, that are coming through. Somebody says, and this isn't what I would do, but we respect everything and all the different opinions. From the 916, they would go Sabonis, Lyles, Murray, DeRozan, Fox. I'm just... I don't think that's... I need to I need to see more from Trey Lyles. Yeah. Uh, he's not a starter to me right now. Yeah, that's for their starting lineup, that, that would is. be their starting lineup. Yeah. I DeRozan think, yeah. at the shooting guard position. Yeah, that kind of depends on, I guess, how big you want to go. Like, you, you, that's a little bit of a bigger lineup. If you're running a backcourt of Fox and DeRozan, mm-hmm. you 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 know, you might not have the top end length, but you definitely have general length. Um, but I don't, I don't really love it. Yeah, I don't think Trey is no disrespect to Trey, or I don't mean any disrespect to Trey, but I just don't really think he's a starter quality guy. And I do yeah. think that there's others on the team that are just more deserving of of getting that kind of role. I think Trey could have at one point stepped into that but I I, to your point I just haven't really seen enough from Trey especially in this past year that makes me feel like yeah Trey Lyles it's not crazy to start him it to me it just makes more sense to slide everybody else up or potentially make that I mean you know I think this is the reason why everybody's talking there has to be another move exactly because that's the spot that just like are we going to start Trey yes. Lyles there or what exactly are we doing? So I definitely understand why that is the thought process, but I just feel like Trey to me is the fourth. Like I would much rather go, I would rather start Malik Monk than, than yes. go the route of starting Trey Lyles. If yeah. That makes sense. And, it, and maybe it's a different conversation next season. Again, this exercise was as presently constructed. We still right. think yeah. the, we still think that the Kings are going to make another move, but if they don't, what would you go with? This is from the, Five three zero, no brainer. Start Keon at the two, and then they ask, "Do you think 
he can be 40% from three next season. I mean, he's shooting with confidence. I think so. And he's going to get a lot of open looks because they have no choice now. The other teams, they Keon is the guy that you are okay to let beat you. So he's going to have that opportunity. The 279 is not high on Kevin Herter at all. Keon is better than Kevin top to bottom. Sure. Keon dogs Kevin. Ke- get Kevin out of here. Can't stand the three guy who can't hit him. <laughs> He's not that good, and his defense is trash, big trash. Keon is him. Start (laughs) him at the two. Monk off the bench is the fuel we need to push. I'm not willing to write off Kevin Herter that much yet, and I do think we are all very high on Keon Ellis, and Keon Ellis had a breakout season, and Kevin Herter had, what was it, Chris, the second worst season of his career besides his rookie year or or second year in the league. So Kevin Herter's stock is low, but I'm not going to count anybody out. That just means he's going to come back with a vengeance. That's a, that's a training camp battle that I can't wait to watch either. Yeah. We we're talking about NFL training camp. Yeah. What about NBA training camp? Yeah. I don't think anybody has anything solidified yet. And if Kevin Herter, I, I believe he'll be nice and healthy yeah. by then. So all three of them, of you know, Kevin Herter and throw Trey Laws in there too. Why not? Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, and, and Trey Laws to some degree, and Keon Ellis have them all battle it out. And Mike Brown. He got that extension. We trust his, you know, his authority and what he's going to choose to do. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. Yeah. Somebody says from the 916, I like a Fox, Monk, DeRozan, Murray, and Sabonis starting five with Keon, Kevin Herter, Trey Lyles, and sometimes Len backing up. I think that is what we all, we all thought. And Brendan, honestly, kudos to, to Brendan Nunes. He was first on this, that the, the feeling around the organization was that Malik Monk was still going to come off the bench. This was before the DeMar DeRozan move. And we didn't know why. We didn't know why Brendan felt like this. He's not going to reveal his sources. But we trusted Brendan, and Brendan was right on. I think there's a, a, a high chance that Malik Monk is going to come off the bench. But I think the understanding was we ain't running it back. So that's why we're okay with believing that Malik Monk is going to come off the bench. Because, again, coming off the bench for a nine seed is a little bit more disrespectful than coming off the bench for a four seed. Yeah, for sure. For what it's worth, uh, I know the texter asked, do we think Keon can shoot 40%? Uh, his 2022-23 season in Stockton shot 44.4% on 4.33s. Last season, 2.93s shot 41%. So there's no reason to think Keon is, this is an anomaly last year. Or, yeah. Hey, he only played half the season. Is that really something we can bank on? Since he has left college, since he's become a pro, and Keon is a little bit older too, we can't forget, mm-hmm. Keon is older than Keegan Murray is. Uh, Keon has consistently shot over 40% since he's kind of left college. And even his final season in college, he really turned it up from beyond the perimeter. And we, Keon's told us, he has said, I used to be an offensive player back right. in my day when I was in high school or when I was a recruit or early in college, I was an offensive weapon and my defense really only came when I went to Alabama because my coach told me ha- I had to. And Keon says, I just think defensively, what would I do as the offensive player? That's how I defend. So I think Keon uh, really does have a lot of offensive chops that people sleep on him for. I think yeah. a lot of people assume Keon Ellis is this Tabo Cephalosha mold right. where he's a great defender, but you have to sacrificing uh, you have to sacrifice the spacing on the other end. I just don't think that's the key with Keon. Uh, I, I definitely think that he's more than capable of being a three point shooter. One last note too, mm-hmm. I heard Anthony Slater mention this morning uh, on the on the question of will M- Malik Monk start. He actually mentioned Mike Brown and how that's where we don't give Mike Brown enough credit mm-hmm. because Mike Brown has the gravitas, he has the personality. And he has the security now to say, yeah, Malik, you're not starting. Like I've yeah. never, I've never once wavered on you being a starter. It's great that you want to be a starter, right? but I'm the coach and I do have some authority. It doesn't have to be in a vindictive way or, you know, trying to put Malik down at all. It's just, no, like nothing has changed for me. If anything, we have a guy who has stepped up yeah. to show me that he could potentially step in that starting role. So I think if anything, it's more supplanted now more than ever that that he's not going to be a star. And you know what, Chris? I'll liken it to Team USA, yeah. right? It, it's not necessarily about, hey, we need the 15 best players. It's also about fit. Yeah, Okay, totally. if it was be- based on who are the five,